Hey everybody. Oops. Welcome back after your holiday and I hope you're ready for another story. Today I'm going to tell you the story of the terrible Dreglin Hogni. It's the one with the um, the falcon. A lot of people ask me if I would tell the story about the falcon again, so here it comes. The story, the terrible Dreglin Hogni. The one with the falcon. Long, long ago, in the highlands of Scotland, there lived an old, poor man with his one, two, guess what? Three grown up sons. They were aged about 17, 18, 19 years old. But they didn't have much. They had a small house, a small cottage, they had a garden. They grew their own vegetables, they had a cow, so they had their own milk. But they didn't have much, they had a little bit of land. And they had a horse, and they had a dog, and quite unusually, they also had a falcon, which is a hunting bird that the old man would use to hunt rabbits and other small mammals. He had a big leather glove that he would put on his hand, the falcon with his talons would sit on his hand tall tall hunting bird and the falcon would fly off catch rabbits and other kinds of animals bring them back anyway in their story one day the oldest son said to his father it's the time i left here you know i'm nearly 20 now it's time i went off into the world and made my fortune come back a rich man we can all live like kings and the old man was a little bit skeptical of his idea but he said okay you can go off and seek your fortune. I'll give you something. And he brought out from the stable his most prized possession, a beautiful black stallion, his horse. And he brought the horse out of the stable, gave it to the son, and the son was so happy that his father gave him his most prized possession, his horse. He couldn't believe it. And he climbed up onto the horse and he rode off, waved goodbye to his father. Goodbye, father. Goodbye, brothers. And he went down the lane to the main track. He followed the main track through the fields, over the hills, down into the valleys, past the mountains, till he came to a very big forest. And he went into the forest through a very narrow path. The path got narrower and narrower. The trees started to hang down lower and lower and lower. And he had to duck on his horse as he rode through. Finally, he knew he was lost. The, the, the path just seemed to end nowhere. Just bushes, brambles, he couldn't find his way through. And he looked all around. And there in the distance, he saw it. A light, small light shining in the distance. And he directed his horse through the bushes, through the, through the trees, ducking through. It came all the way, the light got brighter and brighter and brighter as it got closer and closer and closer. And finally it opened out and he saw what it was. A huge castle. But there was a moat around the castle, so it was full of water. The drawbridge was down. <laughs> it's like the wooden door that falls down in front of a castle, you know. The portcullis was up. <laughs> that metal gate that can rise up. The castle was open. And he rode his horse cautiously over the drawbridge, under the portcullis, and into the castle courtyard. There was nobody around. The doorway into the castle from the courtyard was massive, much bigger than any doorway he'd ever seen before. It was also open. He decided to stay on his horse, just in case, and he rode his horse down the corridor he came to another big door climbed down from his horse and he opened that door it was very creaky it was very creaky <coughs> and it had a giant kitchen inside a huge table much too high for him huge chairs huge wooden wood burning stove for cooking on everything was massive 
He led his horse over to the corner and tied it up. He looked up at the table. There was something on the table. He climbed up onto a chair, stood on the chair, and he could look down at the table. There was a giant bowl of porridge. Okay, and that's like oats and milk all mixed together. And there was a huge spoon. So he took the spoon, dipped it into the porridge. It's quite hard to eat, he had to hold the spoon out. Was, and he was eating, it was a little bit too hot, but he was enjoying it. And he was eating the porridge and he was thinking to himself, well, at least I'm dry. I seem to be safe. I've got food. There's nobody around, it's a bit strange. Then he heard it. Footsteps. Getting closer and closer. The door which had closed behind him started to open again. It was very, very creaky. Really creaky. It opened. And then he came. The terrible. Giant of a man, long, matted, straggling hair hanging down over his face. He had a yellow eye, he had a red eye. The red eye was quite far up, the yellow eye was a bit further down. A giant nose, and from that nose hung a huge bogey hanging down. Horrible yellow, rotten teeth, and a giant, scraggly beard hanging down. And in that beard, it was all little bits of food and little bones and different, different things from all the food that he'd been eating. And every now and again his tongue would flick out as he would just lick up some of the food from his beard, just like Mr. Twit. And also in the beard there was a nest, and in that nest there were four tiny bird eggs. And Gregor and Hogan stood there looking at him like this. And the young man stood, sat there, stood at the table, looking back at the Dragon and Hogan like this. And the Dragon and Hogan was still like this. And the young man was still at this. And finally, the silence was broken as the Dragon and Hogan asked the young man, Does your horse ever kick you? And the young man thought, Well, that's not the question I thought he was going to ask me, but okay. I'll join in with the conversation. Uh, yeah, sometimes he, you know, if I walk behind him, sometimes he kicks me. Take this, said the dragon Hogan, and from his beard he plucked a really gross, horrible, greasy hair. And he handed it to the young man. And he took it. There's a fireplace behind you, burning behind you. Turn around and... Throw this hair into the fire. When my hair burns in the fire, your horse will never kick you ever again. And the young man thought, well, okay, that sounds pretty good. And he made the mistake. He turned around to throw the hair into the fire. And when he turned away from the terrible Drago and Hogney, from his pocket, the Drago and Hogney brought out a tiny little white stick, like a little magic wand. And he touched the young man on the back of the head. Very lightly, but it was enough. The young man fell to the floor as if he were dead. But he's not dead, but it's like he's dead. Fell to the floor. Everything went dark for him. And that was the end of the first part of the terrible Dragon Hogney. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again tomorrow with part two. Bye now.